Hi everyone. Today I'm painting one of my biggest heroes, Prince. My reference photo was a frame from Purple Rain and I chose it because it looks like a watercolor already. I've drawn Prince with some very light pencil outlines. The ones on his face actually turned out way too light and I'm dabbing on some masking fluid to protect the brightest spots. After that dried, I flooded his face and ear with water and I'm dropping in some pretty wild colors, purple, orange, pink, red, and blue. Not your typical face colors. And I'm using bits of paper towel to define some highlights. Next, I'm painting the right side with turquoise and cobalt blue. The darkest parts are thalo blue, and I added purple to that for parts of his coat and hair. A pink light is hitting his face and his hair on the left side, and I painted that quickly with pink, orange, and turquoise. Then I dropped in some deep purple in the shadowy areas, and I'm just going to let this run together and dry. The background is a deep purple with some random lights in the lower left corner. And now his face is dry enough to work on some more. As I mentioned before, the drawing I had going on underneath was too light, and a lot of what I wanted to see disappeared under that first painting pass. When I noticed that, I went, ugh, but I've been a Prince fan since 1983. I've drawn him many times, and I know his face very well, so it wasn't so bad. Having said that, this painting is going to go through an extremely awkward stage for the next minute or so. The colors on his face are so unusual. Like, I've never painted anyone's forehead that color before, but I didn't let the painting's initial weirdness discourage me because sometimes you just got to believe in yourself, and you know what? I think Prince would back me up on that. For me, Prince began to emerge after I started to work some more on his lips. Same thing with his cheekbone. The shape of his face has fascinated me for decades. I'll let his face calm down while I work on his coat, more dark purple, and some lighter shades. I really love working with this limited range of colors. Okay, let's get serious about his eyes. They are the key to capturing Prince. He had the most expressive and beautiful eyes, and he really knew how to play them up with makeup. So go Prince. When I paint eyebrows, I paint the skin beneath them first, and when I look at an eyebrow, there's almost always a medium and a dark color going on. The medium color here is a reddish brown, and I've added purple in the darkest areas, and I've used those same colors around his eyes too. Next, I'm adding some shadows around his nose, temple, and ear. I really can't get enough of this color range. It was like Prince wanted me to have fun painting him. I've darkened his neck and parts of his eyes, and that shadow under his lips is so important. I'm using orange and purple here, and adding that made his lips seem more three-dimensional. His mustache was the toughest color to pin down, and I used an odd mixture of yellow, ochre, green, and purple, and a lot of water to paint it. I'm sure you could get this color some other way, but that's how I landed on it. His coat is casting a blue shadow on his jaw, and it cuts across his face in an interesting way. I like how it seems to continue the line between his lips. A few more shadows here and there. I'm especially happy with his lips, and I'm ready to break for lunch and let this dry. It's always nice to come back from lunch and your painting doesn't look as bad as you thought. I'm removing the masking fluid with a rubber cement pickup. Next, I'm softening those white shapes with a damp brush and maybe a little paint. I also painted a line of water along the edge of his collar and absorbed it with a paper towel. It made a soft highlight. Back on his face, I'm softening some hard edges with little bits of damp paper towel just gently rubbing them along the boundaries, and it really does the trick. That looks a lot more like skin to me. See how that dark purple crept up over the corner of his eye? I'll take care of that in a little bit. First, I'm going to connect his forehead with his hair. I'm using purple and orange again. I 
I really like that red forehead and I'm making those shadows a little more complex. I've sped this video up 20 times and it was almost too quick to see, but I absorbed that purple paint on the corner of his eye with a paper towel. To me, this is the most satisfying part of any portrait, tightening up the details. And it's not Prince if you don't give him that dot on his cheekbone. Such an amazing face. I can't tell you how sad I was when I learned of Prince's death earlier this spring. My friend and fellow fan Melinda and I watched it unfold in real time on social media, from something's happening at Paisley Park to the terrible news. I couldn't work for the rest of the day, and I couldn't bring myself to listen to his music until August. What a genius and what a loss. Prince was one of the first people I ever painted in watercolor, and it took me this long to be able to paint him again. So, as you can see, I'm working on those lights at the bottom. A couple of them were in the reference photo, and I added a few more for some interest. His hair is curly, shiny, and colorful. So I'm adding even more pinks and oranges here and there, and while it's still wet, I'm painting dark purple in all the shadowy areas. This gives me some hard and soft edges in a way that looks natural and is fast and easy. And yes, it's like Prince was helping me paint him. Thank you, Prince. Then it's a few more details and I'm done. Here's the finished painting. Thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe.